Yeah, I gotta feed these guys. I need to make clerics. Looks like I can feed sack to those guys. Don't really care about the cartographers. At some point, I gotta get farmers in here just to have farmers. I don't really like to remove anything that I've built already, but since I'm not gonna be putting butchers over here and I kinda don't like this, I'm gonna remove it. And I can't think of another reason to keep it over here. No, no. The meow meow of the no no. Wow. So I need to build a potion machine. I need to populate the farmer section. These guys could use one more person in there. I don't really care about the stone masons. I don't really care about the fishermen because this has to be turned into a cleric pen. And I don't know what to do with this space here. I can, of course, I can't get this, uh... Meow, meow! And I don't really have any space, any convenient space, over by my storage boxes to make potions with. The only other thing I can think of is to 
now I got the tr uh, tree collector over there. I was going to say separate the tree collector. I haven't checked on the villagers up top in a while. And I, I did a search to see if they're despawning. And I looked on Google and it said that villagers will not despawn unless they're outside a range of the village. So it's either that's not true in their despawning anyway uh, the villi uh, the they happen to be just close enough for the zombie to slap him a few times as he went by or phantoms killed them Or they're outside a range of what is considered the village. Oh, good. Oh, that explains why I haven't had any iron. It's because this guy is just hanging out up here. Which, I could probably remove that box, since I moved everything over here. <laughs> and I'm back to, uh, back, back to mess with this stuff. Yeah, you need to go off the edge there, bud. There shouldn't be anything for these guys to spawn on up here. And I figured I could just leave this. These are all bottom blocks, right? Type bottom, yeah, they're bottom, bottom slabs. Is it this block? Did the golem spawn in there? I think the golem spawned right here, where this block is. I'm gonna fall through here if I try to mess with this. Oh, oops. Just screenshot. And I don't have any birch planks, of course. And I think every one of those is down the hill over here. The other thing I need to do is uh, need to make a way to separate out the villagers that I want because the easiest way to name them is to put them all in mine carts and collect them in like the collection circle over here which I'm not sure, like, would that be enough? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it should be enough to sort 12 villagers and have, like, relatively easy access to go and look to see, you know, what they're selling and stuff. Like, and I think, like, and once I you know, have a villager that I know that I want to sell stuff to. I have to make like a a pen for them. Like, I mean, it feels weird putting 
what are considered people in pens in Minecraft. But I mean, I mean, like, and it feels weird saying, oh, well, it's just a video game. I mean, it is just a video game, but like, to go a little bit off the rails here in my thinking is like, you know, all those cases where like, well, what if it were you in the video game or like, all the movies that like address that topic, like, well, it's just a video game to you, but like, and it's, you know, I, I, like, I'm real happy to have efficient farms in the game and stuff, you know, like the chicken, you know, the 3x, like, turbo chicken egg deployer. And you end up with like 700 chickens <laughs> like it's like inhumane or like the chicken egg collector that's got all those chickens in the block over there like I guess I guess the best way to look at it is I really hope that they don't have any type of sentience and I really hope that it is just a video game And even knowing all that stuff, part of me does still kind of feel like a little bad, you know. Same thing with the cow dropper. I mean, but like after you have so many cows, you kind of have to kill some of them and that you need meat to eat to live in the game and... Yeah, it's just so weird. But like the master librarian, like, and I want to section them out so that they, so I can put a wooden sign next to what they sell instead of just being like, cause some of them sell more than one good thing. I mean, I have all this space out here, but I use this for my zombie collector. I mean, I guess I could just repurpose the zombie collector part. I mean, that's probably going to be the easiest way to do it. Just leave all this flat open space that already has a minecart that goes to it. That's hooked up to the main villager minecart system. And to not use it. The other thing over here is like... I mean, this this would require a slightly more work to make it. Plus, I don't like I don't want to mess with this any to try to make a pathway to get in and out of the. To get through that wall over there. And with as many you know, different rooms that I'm going to separate the villagers out into. Uh, and I still haven't fixed this, made it spider-proof. Need at least, like, this many blocks. Where's my shovel here? Which, the spiders haven't really been a problem, but it's still been kind of bugging me. But I still haven't fixed it. So this is what? One, two, three. Mm. 
And then one, two, and then three. I don't want any air pockets around the village where it could spawn a zombie or a monster or anything underneath the ground. The hum of the ha hum ha. And I know I could do like multi layered, you know, I could do like floors of the village and go up a whole area worth of uh, village. Am I gonna have enough space for this sand? But just like Satisfactory is, unless it's a necessary mechanic in Minecraft to do so, I kind of don't like to do that because I like to be able to go up to like a lookout tower or a lookout point and be able to look down on the stuff that I've built. I didn't realize there was this much sand here. So I'm gonna need this sand for bottles anyway, cause I'm gonna build a potion machine. And I don't like to leave air pockets. So, I mean, this is gonna be a, a big chunk of dirt, but I already have a big chunk of dirt in the, uh... I've gotten this much sand, so I should probably get the rest of it.
And as I say that, there's a big, huge chunk. I'm not getting that part. I think it might even leave some air pockets over here because I kind of don't want to waste the dirt that I have already dug just to fill in this hole. And it's far enough away from the village to where, like, it's kind of like, who cares? That should stop anything from spawning down here. And it doesn't make sense for me to have butchers over here if I'm only going to sell meat to them anyway. The hmm of the hmm ha. So I think I'm going to put my clerics here. So I do need some clerics. And I'll find something to do with these smokers at some point. Don't like to throw stuff out unless I have to. Like, I was going to store all of those, uh... I was going to store all of the stone tools that I got. Because I'm crazy. It's like, I don't need those stone tools. But I need them. Derp derpy herd. Derpy derp. The hum ha. I don't have any emeralds. Should be able to talk to one of these guys. Does anybody want gravel? You want gravel? What level are you? I want to give stuff to like the highest level person that I got to get a master. I think that might be the only guy that I've got there that's high level. This is the one with the iron looking badge. That's got to be in stacks of 10. Ma. But what I'm thinking about for the individual storage cells is so long as they have a workbench, I mean, they're not going to need a workbench because once you've traded with them, they don't lose their profession. Just a workbench, a bed, and a, a rail system. with an activator rail. The hmm of the ha hmm ha. Obsidium.
Where did I get this from? Oh, I think I got it from over there. But yeah, I think I'm going to put the individual storage pens over here because it's still relatively close to the portal. I would have to snake this minecart all the way out over there. I could extend this into, you know, a relatively flat dark spot over there to, uh, to collect a zombie if I have to. But that one that's in the center over there still hasn't despawned. And it came down here for freaking planks. For slabs. All that time ago, and I just now remembered that's why I came down there. The... Hmm, and I named this guy so I think that if you I'm pretty sure if you name them they don't spawn ah oh, crap that's where I got the other one the other mine cart from was from up here how could these both be bottom slabs yeah, see, this is his top slab. <clears throat> oh, but it, that's not going to matter because... It's gonna, not going to matter that it's a top slab because... Shut up. Zombie distracting me. Right in my ear. Right. It's not going to matter because golems won't spawn on rails. Like, where did I get that? And then for a second I thought somehow I got an extra one from there, but no. I had totally forgotten that I was trying to, uh... That I was fixing this thing. There should be no other spot for anything to spawn up here. And this guy is unnamed in a minecart and still hasn't respawned. spawned. It must be because he's within the proximity of the villagers. The only thing I can think of. But yeah, the whole time for the past few videos, I'm guessing that this golem has been up here. And I assumed that I had fixed it to where no golems could spawn up here. Except for that one block. But that shouldn't have spawned it either because it's got minecart on it. So like, how did they manage to spawn a zombie or a golem up here? Are they spawning them on the ladder? And like, I don't want to remove my ladder. It should, should be fine now. And the reason that I've got the creatures turned up so high is because, uh, it's so weird that they won't, oh, there he goes. They won't path over the minecart track. That's, that's something new. They used to not care about the minecart track at all. Somebody 
has just started watching like the videos. My iron golem farm is my first attempt at building an iron golem farm and it works. It works relatively well, but it's still not right as far as the mechanics go because I missed a mechanic. And I kind of needed a break from it to get other stuff done in the game. But I will come back and fix it. Because now I know the proper pattern that I should use. And it's like... Depending on how much I want to sacrifice a potential spawn area. The pattern should be two space blocks and then a pad that's uh, 17 by 17 with the villager spawn or the villager containment area with the three beds in it centered over that 17 by 17 block like and the reason why that's slightly not efficient is because having the three beds there and having the three by three area means that you'd have to add two more blocks to the 17 so it would be like two blocks of space with signs for the golems to fall down and then a 19 by 19 pad and I kind of just got like burnt out on building it and it works well enough in its current state and I, I had to go do other stuff like I had to I had to find a fortress, I had to make potions, I had to like find a blaze spawner, make a blaze farm like but the majorities of the, of the videos so far has been me mostly just messing around with uh, that iron farm and the golems. Let's see, this can go back in the box. And the villagers. And doing basic farming, like, before I realized, because I, the whole time I haven't messed with villagers, like, before I realized you can buy an entire diamond armor set that's enchanted and an entire set of diamond tools with just emeralds from trades. I didn't know that was a thing. And it's consistent to where like it's a thing that you could put in the work to make sure that you have the villagers to do that and then make sure that you have the supplies to supply the villagers to level them up to do that to get the emeralds to yeah. But that format that I have the the layout that I have that iron golem farm in is not perfect. It works. But it doesn't work as well as it could. And I had a bunch of uh I had these are villagers in every one of the eight surrounding pads. And I, I think I'm just going to call them pens. Like, I've been trying to avoid calling them pens because I don't like the idea of blocking the villagers and pens, but that is what I'm doing, and that is what it is. In the, the pens up there, I had three villagers, so 24 surrounding the 32 in the middle. Or the potential 32 because I don't think that I ever fed them enough to have the 32 because I had enough of them spawning golems passively without being scared by a zombie but when I have all 24 in the surrounding pads and I have got my zombie named Pain going around in the circle I did a test for an hour and it generated 812 iron ingots in an hour so like, and I mean, I'm still, this is two stacks of iron blocks, which I'm still working off of the iron from all that time ago. Plus it's still passively generating it, even without the zombies. But yeah, that's, this is a work in progress that I'm taking a break from to finish other stuff. Ma. But if I didn't have this, I wouldn't have easily been able to level up the toolsmith, the armor guy, and the weapons guy. Because they all... 
they all will trade you iron ingots after you get them up to, I think, apprentice. But yeah. Uh, I came back here to throw these carrots and, and you. Um, the villagers have a funny behavior when you throw a stack of carrots and they're in the bed. They'll like perform the walking motion sideways when they're like laying down and it looks weird. It's funny and I didn't realize that until I tried to feed them when they were sleeping. The ha ha hum ha. Right. And I still need to make a dark room spawner. They usually make those over top of the ocean. Because, you know, roughly like 128 blocks above the ocean. It puts the potential spawn sphere. Like I could put it anywhere, so long as it's 128 blocks away from any ground spot. But I like to put them above the ocean, usually. Because it doesn't make sense for me to build it here, because you still have to be within range of the dark room area to make them spawn in there anyway, so it's, it's an AFK farm. But yeah, that gives me my primary source of gunpowder. It gives me all of the other stuff from all of the other mobs that spawn in there. And I forgot how I killed the... Uh, Like, I forgot how I killed the spiders. Because I'm pretty sure spiders don't take fall damage. We snow. But I always remember getting string and spider eyes in there, so I think the spiders do take fall damage after a certain amount. my mini mushroom farm. So the thing that I'm got to do, the other thing that I want to do too is I want to make a zoomed in map of my base here and put it on the floor. And originally I just kind of left this here for the aesthetic of having a bridge that went across the water. But I mean, I have the dirt blocks. I don't really feel like messing with the lava. And I love that I can be out here and it still spawns golems. And I get to see them fall into the pit there. But I need to put a potion farm or a potion machine somewhere around here. I mean, this is my, like, I don't want to call it temporary, but this is just like my quick version of a potion machine. Just so I could have the fire potions and the speed potions to go deal with the, the blazes. 
And anywhere that I go is going to be farther away than I want to be from my central location here. I don't want to move any of the existing stuff that I have. And I would put it here, except it takes up a relatively large amount of space. And the only other flat space that's relatively close where I would want to build something, well, you know, I could just move this, put it here. Move these stairs back by one or two, make these stairs match up with these. Cause I can, I can move this. Uh, but no, I think I'm just gonna put it down here. And I would turn all this lake or this river into stone, except I kind of want it to be grass, just because. But it would be easier to make it into stone. Well, not really, like, turning stuff into stone does take a long time. And I have a ton of dirt blocks where I'm going to have to make another block of... I'm going to have to make another double box that just stores dirt. Plus I need a sorting machine. And I don't want to build anything over between the village or the iron golem farm just because it's far away. Like I put that portal by the farm to test to see if I could put a portal there and have it work. For one, and it does. And I'm so lazy that I would rather go through the nether to go over to the farm. I mean, plus it makes it easy for me, because otherwise I would have to run from the farm over here to this portal, the home portal, to go and bring the stuff over to the villagers at the village. Whereas, I can just dump my stuff in the drop box, do the farm, and then come out over by the village. Yeah, I think I'm making it out of dirt. Uh, I gotta throw this stuff in the box up here. And I don't think a blast furnace does anything but ore. So I gotta throw this in here. And I kinda don't care about the nether deck, so this can just change it places. low-tech speed smelter. Just throw a stack in it and the lava. I 
You know, there's got to be a way to use comparators. I still don't know how to use those the right way. Like, I use them in some stuff. Like, mostly just as a, a stuff-in-the-box detector. But I know that they're supposed to be able to compare stuff. And if I use the comparators properly, I should be able to make an automatic uh, hopper distributor. So that it will only ever distribute like one block, like one block in a furnace. And then move the next thing over and then distribute one block into the furnace and move thing like. But as far as like the logistics of how I would actually accomplish that, I don't really know. So that might not even be possible with the way I'm thinking about doing it. Moo moo. Yeah, I think I'm oh, I still gotta fill up more lava buckets. Yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. taken me all of the time of me playing the game to get to the point where I realized I could probably just keep the food that I need to eat in my left hand up to the point where the blaze spawners where I kept taking damage and having to eat food. Then you just automatically eat the food when you need it. But yeah, I still have some iron from, like, just when I had the uh, golem farm turned on and running at its max. I just cleared it out, but I bet that there's probably some more golems, or probably some more iron in there. This is gonna be when I get the uh, the shepherd that trades for a red dye. It's going to be nice. Cause poppies, I have a few of them. Which I should probably take the dye stuff over here. Just anything that can make dyes. Can you make dyes out of beetroot?
I'm not sure what to do with the glow ink sack. Uh, so you can make red dye out of beetroots. Does anybody want some red dye? Of course they don't. That would be too easy. But eventually, if I keep making more villagers, if I keep making more shepherds, eventually, there goes a golem, eventually, I will find one, I will have one that uh, makes the, the thing there, that does the stuff with the other thing. I think I've got enough cobblestone over here to make the 12. I can make eight of them. Ooh. still be running over here. I would still be on my way from the village to try to run over here. Which, it's so cool that you can put in your own portals. Like, when I found out that you could po make portals and link them up and use them as the means to teleport, like, this is a long time ago, but it was like, wow! So much about this game was like, I mean, it's still, like, they've just kept adding to it, like, I love this game. Because, more or less, every other game was just all prefab. You know, like, prefabricated maps, pre-built worlds, like, you can only do a set amount of stuff, like, But you can, uh, you can stand right on the surface and dig all the way to the bottom of the world. And it's like, you can do what? You do what now? Which was just like an, a thing that was totally not even a thing before. Like, I gotta go harvest and replant my nether wart.
There's something in here I don't need. Like, I like to keep the base materials, at least one stack of everything. And I don't really need the jack-o'-lanterns in here. Having nether wart in here is more important than that. Because then I could be anywhere, build a brewing station, build bottles, and just brew up any potion that I want. Well, any of the most useful ones, which I still need to make a spot for magma cream, which I don't really need this smooth stone in here. Should I use this dirt? <laughs> Go along. I mean, or do I want to make it out of stone? I mean, I kind of like the look of grass. It was just, I didn't have the blocks to build all that area over where the, uh, the golem farm is. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm making it out of dirt. Dort. 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 Dort.
This is harder than it looks. Because you have to strafe just at the right time to keep your cursor facing the side of the block. It's not easy, but it is fast. The um, Like, I would still be making stone out of lava buckets trying to do it this way. Like, I kind of want to make my map floor for my base over here. I mean, this is kind of too many pumpkins. For me to repeat that pattern, like, I could probably... Eh, hey, whatever, I'll just continue the pattern. Uh, but see... <clears throat> That's why this looks funny is because 
It's not three, it's two going this way, and it's two going this way instead of three. I mean, these are all two also. And I wanted it to line up with the edge here. But I can it's kind of excessive, whereas otherwise you could just, you could save on pumpkins and still get the amount of light that you want. Just jump and flop in the bed. It'd be nice if there was a button to just dump all of your inventory into a box.
a dandelino. <clears throat> Processing, processing. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of gravel here. A lot more than I thought there was going to be.
More gravel. I mean, I guess I could move these over here and then shave this part off a little bit. Yeah, it's much wiser.
crap. The ooh. Oops. Nice. Is very satisfying.
Is that a turtle? No, that's a drone. That's I thought the top of its head was a turtle. Turtle. Turtle, turtle. That looks cool. And I really like Respiration 3. Like, I couldn't do this before. I would have, like, already drowned by now. And see, I didn't know this was down here. And the fact that you can swim in Minecraft now is freaking awesome. Did I just jump out of the water like a dolphin? And I mean, I may as well continue to build this out of dirt. And I'm going to run out of blocks, but... We'll run out of blocks and have to go get more blocks. Excuse me, fish. Pardon me, fish. Thank you. I'm going to leave the sand there to let me know that there's sand there. So I don't have to go over to my sand quarry. Yeah, much happier that I did it out of dirt instead of out of grass or out of stone. Like, I would still be making stuff out of stone. This makes me real happy. Not only does it look nice, but it's functional too. Like, wow. Wow. I think I'm just going to leave those. Wow. It'd be nice if there was an easier way to put these pumpkins in. These jack-o'-lanterns. Rather than have to count every three.
Oops. How did I even do that? Oh. Meds two and then into three, but whatever. I don't usually do stuff for the sake of it looking nice, but when I do, it does usually look pretty nice. I to do the inner pattern. I mean, the easy way would just be to do it like this. You just have it one every... Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do because... I mean, I should have enough pumpkins. <laughs> do, you, do you need some sugar? Yes, do you need some sugar, okay? Or some paper? Yeah. I mean, not only does it look nice, the pumpkin, uh, the jack-o'-lanterns are brighter than torches, but you don't end up with a bunch of torches scattered all over everything. And if you're trying to work on something, and if you accidentally go like this, and then you tear up a torch, and then you get a dark spot, and then you have to stop what you're doing and replace the torch, because if you don't, there will be a dark spot. Like, I think I'll just do it every three. This one messed up? No. Wow. Yep, we got a text message here. And Happy New Year. Hold on. Meow. Wow. Wow. I don't even know how to tame a cat. I'm pretty sure you sneak up to the cat because the last time I tried to tame a, tame a cat was when they added ocelots. See, I don't want to leave these dirt blocks here, but... That should be three, right? Yeah. The other nice part of the pumpkins, the jack-o'-lantern, I will continue to call them pumpkins, is you can build over top of them. And they're renewable. Unlike glowstone or lamps. And I hate wasting blocks. So I'm probably going to try to swim under here and grab all these red blocks before they despawn.
No, missed one. Because somewhere over here I want to put my map wall. Which I don't know. Like I don't want to put my potion machine and then my map wall. Because my potion machine is relatively tall. And it'll be in the way of the map wall. And I want to be able to stand up here and look at the map. I think I'm going to put the map right over here. Right in this corner I'm going to start the map because... What I'm going to do is I'm going to have my zoomed out world map to show me my general exploration from where I started from here to then I'm going to make a grid square of every chunk that the entirety of my base takes up. That's all just the zoomed in version. The meow, meow, meow. Hmm. And the melody that I'm singing, or badly singing, is uh, it's from Far Escape. It's an old sci fi show that's really good. I like it a lot. And I'm in the process of rewatching it, so I've got the theme song stuck in my head. I mean, that should be totally a show that they should put on Netflix. Or some streaming service. I mean, it might already be on some streaming service. I think it might be, but I don't really know. Oh, and I have, just so it's been stated, I have zero affiliation with any of the references that I make. Just so that none of that can be misconstrued as that, like... I love watching the golem drop into the pit. Just be doing something and then it's golem time. I'm going all the way back to the video where I decided that I was going to do a villager farm and gonna, like make my first attempt at my own iron golem farm. I was saying I wanted to put it right where it was because I had the flat space of the lake and turn it into stone and so I could be relatively close to it when doing any other stuff in the base and hopefully be able to get to see the golems drop out of the bottom of it. And it worked. And it does. And every time I see the golem fall out, it makes me happy. Meow, meow, meow. I have like no coal. And I need sticks. Yes. What was I doing? I was putting pumpkins in this thing. Some jack o' lanterns. Jack o' lanterns. That cat wants me to tame it. I don't know how. I don't even know what I would do with a cat. 
I mean, it, again, it's a little bit cruel, but I like the functional aspects of things, like, you know, park a, a cat in a, in a spawner or something for its creeper repellent properties. Oops. I think I've kind of decided I don't care about those dirt blocks. Which is a relief, but it also gives me anxiety. Because I know I'm wasting blocks. And every block that you waste over X amount of time is blocks that you otherwise could have had. You know, the whole waste not want not thing. But as convenient as torches are, I don't like using torches. Pumpkins require more work, or jack-o'-lanterns require more work. You know, to plant them, harvest them, carve them, then use torches anyway to make them. But after that whole process has been taken care of, like, you end up with something like this, like, no dark spots, you can build on top of it, you don't have to worry about accidentally hitting one, like, I could be doing something over here, or fighting a zombie or something that got in the base, and like, as I say it, I got a zombie in the base. There is a red spy in the base. But as far as ease of crafting and quantity and placement, it's hard to beat torches for that. Come on, you can do it. And there he goes. And I wanted to see just how well lit this underneath part was. It looks cool when it was dark, but it looks cool like this too. I think all of those blocks, nope, some of them are still here. Yeah, that looks cool. Derpy squid. Be squeed. Much nicer. I got some dark spots up here. Be squeed. One, two, three. One, two, three. Be cookies. I can make cookies now. One, two, three. One, two, three. Much, much nicer. Hey, whatever, close enough.
I think that bamboo is ready. Oh, the old bamboo. Wow. Oh. Oh, well, you can stack the bamboo from the spot? Hmm. I didn't know that. Can't you climb bamboo? No. So I don't know if I want to do the map wall first. Like if I build the potion machine, that's like a lot of stuff to put in and a lot of stuff to take back out if I don't do the map wall properly. So I should probably do the map wall before I do anything else.
Yeah, a little bit on not uniform there, but whatever. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, reducing some of the cows here. And I need some leather. The moo, 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 moo. kind of get stuck sometimes especially the baby cows the baby cows will get stuck underneath a regular piston which is why I put in my uh, timer that retracts them this thing this is just an indicator light that lets me know that it's on it's pretty cool because it's powered by a button push and this is a, a T flip-flop the way that this works is whenever you push a button, you send the button push. It moves the block into the top dropper or into the bottom dropper. And if it's on the top dropper, it sends a signal out. And I can use that signal to turn my clock here on and off. This, is, this thing is a clock. And with it being a button, you can have, you know, with it being pulse driven instead of on or off driven, you know, like a switch where it's just a solid state, or not a solid state, it's, a switch is either on or off, so you can't have more than one switch either be on or off without an XOR gate. So it's just easier to, uh, this is a baby cow filter. Slash elevator. It, uh, but the piston retracts and, hello. And it makes it so it pushes the baby cow up. So like if you have, if you're, especially here, like if you have a bunch of baby cows and you're trying to feed the cows for XP. It makes it much easier to do it that way. Like look at all these freaking torches. Like, I've left them here because, you know, I didn't have my large pumpkin farm when I built this. But they kind of have to go. Because I'm tired of... Not only are they in the way, like, visually, but you'll end up breaking them off if you're not careful. And it's like... some lag here. Oh, there we go. And again, typically I don't do aesthetic stuff, but this is both aesthetic and functional.
much nicer. And no dark spots. My map wall is going to be pretty substantial, but it's going to look cool enough to where it's worth doing. Mm, pig pig. Is there anyone else that would like? you oh I need seven isn't there another one and seven two button Almost ate raw mutton. I mean, I should probably fill in that dirt spot over there. <laughs> golem. Another golem. Now, in that time since I unclogged it, is. If there's a golem in the center area, it's within the range of all of the other golems that might potentially spawn. And because of that, that means that that one golem will shut down the whole process. I shut down the whole spawner. It's so nice. This is my first iron farm. It's just, I can't believe just how much iron I'm getting out of it. And it's, it's incredible. Like, it's like, wow. Like, you go put these over there. Later. So I got a little bit of leather now. No. What was I using the leather for? All right. I still have junk in this box over here. I do.
Well, I've got all the preparation done, and I don't want to be thinking about what I want to do as I'm trying to do it. So I think I'm going to call it a video here. This looks so much nicer. And, yeah. I mean, I'm not actually cheating here, but the thing that I'm about to do is I'm going to turn on the... The game mode. I'm gonna turn on creative mode for a second. Just so I can fly up and look at everything. Like, I haven't actually done this yet. Like, you get a little bit of a, a base established here. And granted, while I could go in creative mode and fix this whole thing, I mean, it kind of takes uh, the fun out of it. It takes some meaning out of the time it's, you know, that's the whole point of survival mode. I mean, why would you cheat and then go back to survival mode and then, like, you know, that does look cool. So let me set it back to, uh, Survival mode. And I think I'm gonna call it a game here. I think I'm gonna, well not a game, a video. Is I gotta think, do some thinking about how I'm gonna do the world map and everything else. Well, thank you for watching. And thank you for subscribing and happy new year. And I'm clicking the button right now.